Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I'm Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas, joined by Kiev O'Neill at the Odds Breakers. The Odds Breakers at the Odds Breakers on Twitter, theoddsbreakers.com, and the Odds Breakers podcast. Tell me a little bit about what you do and what people can find at your website and what they can listen to on your podcast. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me on. As you know, I've been huge fans of Wager Talk over the years. You guys have all been on the Odds Breakers podcast. You, Marco, Ralph, you know, Brian, fantastic content. You've helped me grow so much and I, I'm so appreciative for that. You know, I, I've been sports betting since 2003 and I think I had that first lucky year or so and then I suck for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there. And then I, you know, but I was still really into it. I wanted to know why and I started getting good later in life. Um, listening to media like you guys inspired me. I just like talking about sports. I like talking about, you know, the lines. I like talking about efficiencies. I like talking about markets, you know, so it was kind of was perfect for me. And I started up before the Big Bang, before in early 2017. This is our fourth year, kind of before it was legalized. And I was shocked how quickly it became legalized. But uh, it kind of gave me a little bit of a jump and a boost uh, above some other people. So it's been great uh, having you guys around have been just has just been fantastic. And I'm having a great time. That's awesome. So happy to hear. And yes, you guys, the podcast is absolutely amazing. Make sure you give it a listen. But more importantly, you're here because you're a Big Ten gentleman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a so the Big Ten is my second favorite basketball conference. Might almost be my first favorite football conference. That being said, it's college basketball time. It's March Madness. And you're here to give us a Big Ten preview. So where else should we start besides the bottom with the <laughs> Nebraska Cornhuskers as a former Big, Big 12 girl? I love to see this. <laughs> Nebraska. I'll tell you right now, Nebraska is a terrible team. And... Um, and they're, they're 5,000 to one on William Hill to, uh, to win this. And I picked William Hill because I know that it's your favorite book and all. So <laughs> I, figure, I figure why not uh, use them for the odds, Kelly? Why not? But, but, but no. Anyways, um, they're 5,000 and one for a reason. They might as well be a million to one because they have absolutely no chance. They rank dead last in both offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency in the whole league. They, they've, they're bottom hundred something on Ken Palm. I, this is the team that you want to bet overs on because when teams fa play fast, they lose fast. Okay. Lose very fast. So uh, that, that's something you want to look at. Don't take a Nebraska under because they're going to keep pushing the tempo no matter what. And you're going to see points run up just like that Minnesota game last time. Yes, we did see that happen last Saturday. Okay. Northwestern, not much better. 12 and 18 against the spread this year. I actually didn't keep a first half record against the spread like I normally do. I, I let this college basketball season get away from me. But I can almost guarantee you there was a stretch of time where Northwestern was in a dog fight mm -hmm. until about the middle of the second half. Yeah. And then the wheels fell off. This Northwestern team has shown some moments of greatness, but overall – there's a reason why they're ranked 13th in the Big Ten. I can't figure out this team. Um, as I said before, Chris Collins, I thought of him as a much better coach than this. I just think the Big Ten is so good. They kind of hit a buzz. The Big here. Ten is very good this they, year. I mean, there's just nobody they can beat up on. You know, there isn't your Wake Forest out there. You know, there there isn't your Iowa State's out there for the Big Ten, really. It's the, the only th one is Nebraska. Every, everybody else is extremely good. As a matter of fact, this whole league is power rated very close to each other. I mean, we're top. talking eight or nine of these teams are going to make the big dance, it looks like. So At from least. a conference perspective, they have the most depth. Yes, absolutely. And Northwestern, I'll tell you one thing good about them, though. Um, they're being overlooked. Okay. And I like how they finished their last three games. They beat Penn State. It was a great spot for them. I believe it was senior night at home. They took care of business. But it's those kind of things and the fact that these players could love their coach to make them a little bit scary when it comes to this team. They, they're playing with house money. They ain't going nowhere. They have nothing to lose. So um, why not look at that team against someone who has all the pressure on the world? Like Minnesota, so um, just I'm just saying, N Northwestern is they're a bad team, but they're, th there's a distance between them and Nebraska. Okay, next up's Indiana. We'll get to the Gophers here in a minute. You just mentioned uh, this Indiana team, man. They really let me down against your Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday. They are just not clutch. No, that's their problem. No, no, and it's funny you say that because I, I have a little saying for every team. Uh, Indiana is the anti-clutch anti team in the Big Ten, and Archie Miller is taking it pretty bad right now. It's funny he used to coach, I believe, Dayton. And, yeah. Uh, look at uh, Dayton right now, <laughs> guys. And uh, I don't know why they can't finish. They have so much talent over there. They right have now. so much talent. I mean, and they're up 
the entire game right. until about the last three minutes, and it, it just didn't make any sense as to why they collapsed. Did they get out coached? Did they get outplayed? What was it? I, I think they took their foot off the gas, if you want me to be honest with you, and that is a, a team that I can't really get behind. Yeah, and they had Wisconsin, you know, dead nuts done, and uh, they just couldn't finish and shoot, shoot at the end, and I don't know um, if you, how you're supposed to be able to bet on this team. The one good thing that they have for them, they beat Florida State, they beat Notre Dame, those are some pretty good wins. If they make a little bit of a run here, they would be a, a possibly a bubble team that would be in the tournament, as long as too okay. many at larges are not stolen. And uh, they're down to 30 to one. So you see the difference between Northwestern and 1,000 to one down to 31. That's how tough these 12 teams are in the Big Ten. And I'll tell you right now, the way the bracket is lined up, whew, I'll tell you, some of the best teams are at the bottom. All right. Uh, you mentioned 30 to one. Minnesota is also 30 to one. Uh, they have a little namesake with their coach, but outside of that, this Minnesota team beats up on bad teams, as we mentioned, teams like Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Tends to play better at home. I'm curious to see how they're going to play here on this neutral court. I call Minnesota desperate and dangerous, okay? Because this team, they rank kind of in the middle of the Big Ten, much better than what their record are. As a matter of fact, they're only two and eight again in games decided by six points or less two in eight and that's not what I want to hear because they're going to be within <laughs> that uh, that kind of point spread range I have a feeling in most of this tournament that's true if they can get past the first round of course and uh, they're not a good free throw shooting team so they're a terrible favorite I like them much more of a dog and um, they're the hot and cold streaks really killed them they can't finish games um, but they're just they're good. They just can't finish games. Gabe Culture has to play better. Marcus Carr, I thought that he needs to be play better. He was a transfer from Pitt. If those guys can put it together, Daniel Orturu is a beast down low. They could be very dangerous if they start out the gate hot. They have to win to get in. Okay. Something to keep an eye on there with a little bit of motivation for the Gophers. Another team that's 30 to 1, the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue is a little Jekyll and Hyde for me. And that's where it makes it scary. You mentioned teams that don't make their free throws. This Purdue team went on a run last year. I think that they have some of that same talent. They still have that same heart. I just don't see this team being able to get deep, not even into the Big Ten tournament. Right. Well, the thing with Purdue, you've seen them explode and just do amazing. And then you just scratch your head. It's like, how are they playing this bad? Their road shooting percentage has been terrible at 37% uh, from the field. That's that's like bottom eight. I feel like I could shoot 37% uh, from the field. With your eyes closed. And that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's like bottom eight in the country out of 353 teams. That's how bad it is. Is. And when I look at them, they're not playing away, but they're not playing at home either. So what's going to happen here? Eric Hunter and Jahad Proctor have to play good. But I do trust Matt Painter a little bit. And I really wanted to be on Purdue, but they're just in a very tough side of the bracket. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. They're a dangerous team because they're desperate. We'll see if they could uh, uh, make some noise. All right, I kind of ba uh, bagged on this team a little bit earlier in today's videos, but Rutgers, just a very middle of the road team, pretty decent against the spread this year. They're at 22 to one to win this tournament. They're in the big dance. Do they really care about the Big Ten tournament? You know, I, I, I don't know. That's hard to that, that's hard to quantify. Motivation's always hard to quantify, and people get it wrong when they do this. But what I do when I look back, I can't remember teams that got off the bubble by a, a nice finish in their uh, in their conference really go uh, and win that tournament. And um, some more research needs to be done on that. Kind of hard to find that stat. I've looked in a few places already, but um, they have some terrible losses on neutral courts. They lost to St. Bonaventure. Yes. You know? They did. I remember now that you say that. <laughs> they lost to Michigan in their backyard in Madison Square Garden, pretty much. They lost at home to Michigan. You know, they finally got that road win against Purdue because they're so desperate to do it and it went overtime. That's kind of the letdown that I'm thinking. They beat Maryland, they beat Purdue, not loving Rutgers. I think they're happy to get in the big dance because since 1991, this is the first time they made it. Congratulations to Rutgers, but I do not like you at 22 to 1. All right, Michigan. <sighs> I don't love Michigan's coach, Jawan Howard. I think that's kind of my beef mm -hmm. with this Michigan team. I think he needs some more time with this program. Your thoughts on them winning the Big Ten tournament? I like their seed, and I like that they're facing Rutgers because they beat Rutgers already a couple times. I like that they're in the top of the bracket, which is definitely the easiest part of the bracket. I think this team is achieving 
in lieu of Juwan Howard. I, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. But I'm not I, saying he's a bad coach. I just think he just needs a little bit more time to get his system in, to get his guys in. Yes. I feel like they have these. this core team hasn't really bought into him just yet. I don't think so, and they're kind of relying on Xavier Simpson. I, I wrote them as the team who relies completely on Xavier Simpson. So if he has a good game, they're going to win the game. If, Got they, it. if he has a good game, they're fine. He's a point guard, but if he's missing and he doesn't have the greatest three-point the shot, three. then, then this team's over. You know, I do like the fact that they shoot about 45% on the road, though, so uh, that's pretty good. I think Wagner and Davis are their bench players that need to step up down low, um, but I don't like their three-point shooting as a team at 30%. It's one of the worst. Stop Xavier Simpson's little hook drive, you stop Michigan, so I, I, I'm not liking them to uh, win it all either. All right, the Iowa Hawkeyes down to 10 to 1 here in Vegas, 19, 9, and 3 against the spread this year. I took them at home. I faded them a couple times on the road and got burnt. This mm -hmm. team, I would say, is one of the more complete teams in the Big Ten. Your thoughts? Their defense shows better than it really is. It's third worst on, uh, in the Big Ten on Ken Palm, but I think that's only because they play fast. I think uh, I think that number would be a little bit better. I really like Luca Garza. He's actually the most versatile. I think big he's man. I think he's a great team leader as well. I think the team really starts to rally around him, which yes. is huge uh, when you can get someone like that on the court. Yeah, and when Wisecamp and McCaffrey are playing well then I was really playing well here. Um, Twissant, if he can shoot some threes, this team can just blow teams out and kind of come with the force. They're a fast paced team. Um, I do like where they're seated here. Their cons, I guess, is their defense and uh, Toussaint himself only shoots the three ball at 27%. If he can improve that, um, I like it. But to be honest with you, I kind of like Iowa as a favorite a little bit more than a dog in the tournament. Okay, next up, the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a team that I was not on for a majority of the season. And we know they did well against the spread, and then I tried to catch up to it, and I was a little late to the party. That being said, if they can hit it from three-point range, this uh, this team at 10-1 to 1 kind of has has me circling them a little bit in this Big Ten tournament. It's a juicy team to look at for sure. Um, I've always been on the side that they're a little bit overrated on Ken Palm. And it, remember they were number one or number two? They're very highly rated on Ken Palm, and which is, is kind of making me wonder what I'm missing. Well, when they beat North Carolina, North Carolina was battered and they were getting too much credit for it, and they kind of shot up, and then they were kind of, you know, they lost three or four games in a row and as soon as the Big Ten happened. Um, they're the worst team in the Big Ten at defending the three, too. That's one people have to look at. Um, if Wesson's cold, Caleb Wesson, that's, that could spell a loss for this team if he's cold inside. Um, and some big guys like, you know, possibly Purdue might be the ones to be able to stop him. Injuries to Kyle Young and lo the loss of uh, Gigi Carton has really hurt their depth. They were complete before that, but um, they turned the ball over a lot, ranking 12th in the Big Ten. So uh, out of 14 teams, they're the third worst at turning the ball. I think they're a little bit overrated here, and they only shoot 40% on the road. All right, this team that I love, mainly because I love their coach, Mr. Brad Underwood. Illinois, pretty mediocre against the spread this year, but this team really surprised me and has stepped up really well in Big Ten competition. Well, you're skipping over my Badgers at number five here. Oh, this my gosh, I, 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 I so I, did. I, I, you might have been doing this on purpose. I don't out know. Did Mark will tell teams, you to do this? No, actually, right, well. out of all the teams to skip over, you're right, I did skip over. Uh, all right, at number uh, yeah, five, yeah, Wisconsin, six to one odds. The, Very hot team right now. Cost me a lot of money on Saturday. Oh, that hurts, Kelly, but I'll tell you, I do call it Wisconsin hot because they're the hottest team in the Big Ten. So hot right now. The ultimate boomer bust team is what I call them. Now, this is weird about Wisconsin. If they're in the big uh, the NCAA tournament, you wouldn't be shocked if they beat Baylor. You wouldn't. No. But you also wouldn't be shocked if they lost to Winthrop. That, <laughs> that's, that's how that's they fair, are. Yes. They have no one that can take it to the hole. There's some problems with this team, but I'll tell you this. Greg Gard deserves to be Big Ten Coach of the Year. Since 1948, this is the first time that the Big Ten champion hasn't had a first team or second team all conference player. That's coaching right there. So I think it's a little bit of a stretch to say they're going to win this thing. And I hate to say it as a Badger fan, especially when they're a number one seed. But there's, you know, six to one tells you that uh, Vegas doesn't like them either as a number one seed. And uh, they struggle to rebound when they miss. When they're hot, they're great. But if they miss, they rank 12th in offensive rebounds. They can lose bad so um, they might be happy with their Big Ten regular season champion you know we'll see I, I, I'm not sure if the motivation's there I would love my Badgers to win but they're not my favorite in this tournament okay back to Illinois 
You have them listed as the most explosive team in the Big Ten next to Michigan State. That's right. I call them the most explosive team, and I have to say next to Michigan State. Well, Sparty right now. <laughs> we'll get to them in a few more numbers. We'll get to them. Uh, this team, young and hungry, and, they're, and they got size. They have speed. Ayo Dusumu looks like a future NBA star to me. He's really carried this team. When he was banged up in the middle and they lost those games, um, it showed how much they rely on him. But he's healthy now. Um, I like them as a dog more. They don't seem to kind of finish teams. As you saw, they were winning to, uh, against Iowa by 16 with like six minutes left and only one by two at the very end. Iowa actually could have won this game. And it's because they kind of they falter at the end. They, they're, they're the, since they're young, when they're the favorite, they don't. It doesn't bother them. They, they kind of let down a little bit. But when they're the dog, they want to prove everybody wrong. So I like this team as a dog. Um, they're not that good at shooting the three, and that's my problem. They rank last at shooting the three in the Big Ten at 29% right now. And maybe it's because DeSumo was out for a while. But they tend to choke away these leads. Benzamish Vili needs to play better. He hasn't scored double digits since mid-January. Georgie, what are you doing? Get over there. Get out there and win this tournament is what I have to say, but I don't mind them at 10 to 1 odds, especially where they're at. Okay, Penn State, you have them listed as the number three team in the Big Ten. Uh, I always wonder when teams lose their last game of the year, especially to an ugly team where they're already looking ahead to the Big Ten tournament, where they're just looking past a bad team on the road. I'm not in love with this Penn State team. Yeah, I don't like how they finished either. Um, I, I don't know what was wrong with them, but Mirian Jones was out for a while, and it's taken him some time to get his feet under him, and may, maybe this is the spot where they come back and, and start winning again. This team is capable of beating anybody, and that's why I call them the most dangerous team in the Big Ten. Okay, the pros, they're decent on the road, 42.2% shooting, not terrible, beating some big names like Michigan State and Michigan. They're very experienced. They got a well-rounded team. Lamar Stevens can take it to the hole. Mike Watkins is a beast down low. They play fast. They can play slow if they need to. They have a higher floor than teams like Wisconsin, Purdue, and Maryland. I think their floor is higher. I think they're going to be in every single game if they don't win them. Their cons, they lost five of the last six games, and Mirian Jones needs to play a little bit better. They rank worst in fouling other teams. So um, they send a foul a lot. Um, Seth Lundy and Jamari Wheeler, if they step it up, this team can go all the way. So um, the defense has been a little bit of an issue, but it's also because they play fast. I call them the most dangerous team, and I think they're the third best in the Big Ten. Okay. Maryland Terps, this team, <laughs> I, I don't know what to think of this team. Listen, they started off really hot, and I think the market caught up with them for sure, mm -hmm. no doubt, and that, and that does happen. Um, maybe they got a little lucky against Minnesota. Maybe Minnesota took their foot off the gas, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm a little salty about this Maryland team. Four to one to win the Big Ten championship. I don't think they care. Those odds are terrible for Maryland. I mean, they, they've proven that they're not elite. We know that. And I, I call them the if not now, then when. But you have them as the <laughs> second best team in the Big Ten. So yeah. that. I, I speaks volumes to me. I struggled with that, but it's the play of Anthony Cowan, Aaron Wiggins, and Jalen Smith. Okay. They're a triple threat of excellent players. Okay, That's why um, they're a little bit weak on the bench since they lost the Mitchell twins. They transferred out. They're supposed to be the freshmen. They were supposed to get better this year, but they have a very good defense. They rank 23rd on Ken Palm. They get uh, to the free throw line a ton without fouling a lot themselves. That's what I like about them. They kind of play poise like that. Um, and if you look at their neutral courts, they've played well on neutral courts. And that's why you saw them in the non-conference go so far and play well because they won the neutral courts. When I look at the Big Ten tournament, it's played on a neutral court. The cons, Jalen Smith needs to be a little bit tougher inside. They only shoot 39% uh, on the road. Um, they shoot way too many threes for the way they make them. 46% uh, of their field goals are threes. I don't like that. But um, I think when the rubber meets the road, whenever the team feels challenged, they're the ones that kind of bring themselves up, as we saw against Minnesota. So reluctantly, I put them at number two. But at the same time, there's not a big difference between Maryland, Penn State, Illinois, I would agree Wisconsin, with that. and Ohio State. I would agree with that. Uh, but we know the clear cut, best team in the Big Ten. Is Sparty 
two and a half to one to win the Big Ten tournament. I don't know if they're going to do it, though. Listen, this is a very good team. We know Izzo and March. We're going to hear that narrative forever until we die. That being said, this Michigan State team, I think, is getting a little too much love right now. They're getting a lot of love by the books, but it's how they finished. And you know when Izzo turns beet red in the head, it, it starts blowing up with helium and he starts floating into <laughs> yeah. the rafters. I mean, if you're a away team, you just want to take a spitball and, you know, knock, knock the guy down. But you know it's March when that happens. And, you know, you see this team just rise. The most experienced player in the Big Ten is Cassius Winston. Now if he could just make his free throws when they're laying eight and a half. <laughs> Yeah, as long as, you know, they just need to win this thing. Obviously, this is I don't like the two to one. If you are laying minus 150 on average on every single game, the three games they'd be playing, that's 3.5 to one. That's okay. the value of it because you get um, 450 minus the 100 you put in. So, in my opinion, um, Michigan State not only has the explosiveness. They are the complete team. They're the most dangerous team. They're the most balanced team. They're the second hottest team behind Wisconsin. Michigan State looks dang good right now. Who wants to go against Izzo when they're this motivated, in my opinion? Now, the Big Ten, I hate the way the bracket's set up. I hated it because I wanted to do a smaller play on like Purdue. I wanted to do a smaller play on like a Penn State. But it happens that my top three teams, Maryland, Penn State, Michigan State, and then the sixth team, Ohio State, is all on the same side. And so is Purdue. Purdue's got the size that I liked. So uh, I have my fourth and fifth team on top. Michigan State, to me, is the only team that can get out of that thing. So in my opinion, the verdict of this whole Big Ten is that I'm going to do a money line rollover with Michigan State. And I think by the, when it's all said and done, you'll probably make at least three or 3.5 to one. I think they're the best team, and I think they're ready to take this tournament. Now, if you want to get really cute, you can take someone on the top, maybe a 10 to one on like Iowa, maybe a 10 to one on Illinois. I like Iowa because they beat Wisconsin already. They beat Illinois and almost beat them at home. As you saw on Sunday, they right. really came back. They're probably really motivated. The team loves their player Garza, Big Ten Player of the Year. I think if you want to get cute, you can throw them on top just for half of what you put on Michigan State. And then by the time you get to the final game, everything is cake. Okay, great stuff. Wager Talk TV users get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at either wagertalk or sportsmemo.com.